Three student government slates expressing plans for the university at the first debate tonight. A full recap of what each slate hopes to accomplish just ahead. While student government debates happen on campus, one national government debate might finally come to an end. Details tonight. And it was a lovely day for the Valentine's holiday. Not going to be the case overnight. I'll tell you what you can expect in the full forecast. From the heart of Ball State University, live from the Unified Media Newsroom, NewsLink Indiana starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here with us tonight. I'm Tyler Brummett. And I'm Emily Harless. The Student Government Association began the campaigning process tonight with the presidential and vice presidential debate. Yeah, Emily Newslink Indiana's Jeremy Masukovich is live tonight with an update. Jeremy, what do you got for us? Thank you, Tyler and Emily. I am live now in the Arts and Journalism building where we just wrapped up the presidential and vice presidential SGA debate. Tuesday was the first time where we announced these slates to the public, but it wasn't until today where Elevate, Empowered, and United were able to get in front of the Ball State community. The three slates were able to discuss a number of topics, including stances on university policy and their platform points going into this election. Three slates competing to take the lead of the Student Government Association in 2019. Each is focused on bringing something unique to the table for students. Empower President Julian Zimmerman wants to make a point of putting safety first in their campaign. Our biggest uh, stance is definitely student safety. Um, we've seen um, a lot of chances for things to be done to help student safety within SGA in the past years, and it just hasn't gotten done. Um, so we've come up with some very tangible and realistic ideas of how to address that issue. Another SGA slate represented at the debate was United. United President the Jake Biller seconded in power's emphasis on safety with a focus on how to make um, residential halls me, safer. Well, one of the ones I'm excited about especially is uh, making it university policy that hall directors and assistant hall directors are CPR and first aid certified. Elevate made a point to put inclusivity at the forefront of their campaign. Campaign manager Miriam Bavel spoke of the importance of smaller student groups around campus. We want to include every single organization on campus. Inclusivity is our huge point. Um, we tried to incorporate every single bit um, into our platform. Uh, we don't want to focus on just the big organizations. We want to get every single one. So we've been contacting all of them this entire time leading up to this debate. With just two weeks in the campaigning process, the, the pressure is really on for these slates to make an impact in a very short period of time. Tonight was the first time where each slate was able to tell attendees what they believe the most important aspect of their own specific campaigns were. Other topics discussed include sexual assault, campus transportation, and Ball State's recent decision to withdraw the Midwest Exchange Program. All three of the slates represented expressed gratitude that this is a much more competitive election in comparison with last year. Live in Muncie, Jeremy Sukovich, Newslink, Indiana. All right, thank you, Jeremy. And coming up next for the SGA will be the All Slate debate taking place on Monday at 6.30 p.m. And that debate will be held in the Student Center Ballroom. Stick with NewsLink Indiana for continuous SGA coverage. And as we transition now to the weather, you know, Emily, first of all, it was a very nice day to be outside mm -hmm. to spend Valentine's Day outdoors. It wasn't too hot. It wasn't too cold. It was actually just right out there. Yeah, I know. I was very excited. I was able to put my puffy coat back in the closet and not wear it today. <laughs> and I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to do that for the next few days. So, Liz, what do you have for us? Well, Tyler, Emily, I hope you were in love with these temperatures as much as I was today. It was a beautiful sunny day. Currently across the state of Indiana, we're looking at temperatures really just starting to head into those 50s. 51 in Bloomington, 47 in Indianapolis, 49 here in Muncie. The next couple of hours, we're going to start to decrease, but not much past 40 degrees, just sitting at 36 degrees later on tonight. The big thing to note are very strong wind gusts coming into our area ahead of another frontal system coming through. Wind gusts will start to exceed 25 to 30 miles per hour in the overnight hours. By 10 p.m. tonight, we're looking at wind gusts starting to get into those 30s and then once we start to push off into the later half we're looking at pushing those 30s in Winchester, Richmond and Portland. All of those wind gusts are combined with these cold temperatures. I'll detail all those out in my full weather. All right Liz thank you so much we'll check back in in a moment. Meanwhile uh, 20 people are behind bars after a series of drug raids across Indianapolis. According to U.S. Attorney Josh Minkler the arrests were made in Hawville in that neighborhood there on the city's near west side, state and federal officers were involved in the raids. The raids resulted in the capture of nearly 40 guns and over $155,000. Police also seized heroin, fentanyl, meth, and cocaine. Minkler also says four other people are facing charges, but they have not yet been taken into custody. The Senate voted 83 to 16 in favor of the bipartisan government funding and border security bill. The House will take up the measure Thursday night. 
The president is expected to sign it, according to the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders, but both also say Trump will likely declare a national emergency to fund his border wall. The spending bill only allocates $1.3 billion for a barrier, well short of the $5.7 billion the president wants. A partial government shutdown kicks in Friday at midnight if a new funding bill isn't signed. He, I would say to all my colleagues, has indicated he's prepared to sign the bill. He will also be issuing a national emergency declaration at the same time. And I've indicated to him that I'm going to prepare, I'm going to support the national emergency declaration. Lawmakers were set to start voting on the compromised border security bill this afternoon. The bill could get to President Trump's desk as early as tonight. Also tonight, Jamie Claus's family released a statement today to say thank you for the support they've received since the 13-year-old was found alive after missing for three months in Wisconsin. February 10th marked one month since Claus was found alive. 21-year-old Jake Patterson is accused of kidnapping her in October after breaking into her Wisconsin home and murdering her parents. Claus escaped from Patterson's home where she was being held captive and alerted neighbors who called police. Patterson was taken into custody soon after and police say he confessed. He is being held in a Wisconsin jail on two counts of first degree intentional homicide and one count of kidnapping. And it has been one year since a former student walked into his Parkland, Florida high school and killed 17 people. Across the country, people paid tribute to the victims of the deadliest high school shooting in history. But the memories are more poignant in Parkland. Natasha Chan is in Parkland, Florida with more. At 10.17 this morning, students across Florida stood silent. The tribute honoring the 17 people who died one year ago at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. One year ago, when Alyssa was brutally shot down and taken from our hearts, and it is very painful. A year ago today, there was chaos and confusion during the Valentine's Day shooting rampage. But now a peaceful memorial garden stands outside the school. A sign with the school's unofficial slogan, MSD Strong, hangs above. Today is a day that uh, we are calling a day of uh, service and love uh, to honor uh, the victims. In almost an instant, student survivors became activists and made it their mission to campaign for gun reform. This is our generation's Vietnam War, except the war is in, in our country. They crossed the country holding protests. Fight for your lives before it's someone else's job. And rallies. We were the only people that could have made this movement possible. Since the shooting, 26 states and Washington, D.C. passed varying gun control measures. We're really seeing a lot of reasons to look to the future and see hope. But after the year of activism, today is a day for silence. The Florida State House is lit with orange lights tonight in honor of the victims of the shooting. Now Amazon's not feeling the love this Valentine's Day. The online retail giant is pulling out of a big deal. Details after the break. And a different way to hang out with your Valentine this weekend. We've got the details on the event happening on campus after the break. No more, he didn't mean it. No more, she seems fine to me. No more, not my problem. No more, she was drunk. No more, he was drunk. No more, she was asking for it. No more, he didn't mean it. No more, why didn't she tell anyone? No more, we don't talk about that. No more bystanding. No more ignorance. No more excuses. No more. So, I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. <laughs> After retiring from the NFL, I've been able to spend a lot more time coaching my daughter's basketball teams. It's something I love to do. Through our games and our tournaments, we see all types of coaching, good and bad. And it begs the question, do we really know who's coaching our kids? 
Do they have the proper training and screening it would take for me to be comfortable with my daughters playing for that coach? Our Youth Basketball Association made the decision to use trusted coaches to screen and train all of our coaches. I'm a trusted coach. Are you? Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. One Ball State organization is taking today's holiday to new heights. NewsLink Indiana's Michelle Kaufman tells us about Valen Climbs Day. We are here at the rec center at the Outdoor Pursuits Rock Wall, where they're currently hosting a special event, Valen Climbs, in honor of Valentine's Day. And I'm here with my belay partner, Kevin. We're in a relationship, and if you come here, you can be too. For their first Valentine's Day event, Outdoor Pursuits is hosting partner routes on the climbing wall. There's a bunch of gyms around the country that have been doing similar events for a couple years. I saw one of those videos and I said, why don't we try something like that? And you don't have to be a pro to do one of them. No experience necessary. Um, you're going to be on a, a rope with your partner with a belayer holding you up. So if you fall, you're only going to drop like a couple of inches or a foot at most. Um, some technique that you need to know, but that's why I'm going to be here during the event. If anyone needs any help, I'll be like, oh, move your right foot to your left hand and give that coaching as they need it. Laura Johnson has been climbing for almost two years and wanted to try the challenge of Valen Climbs. The sign said that the routes were impossible to do alone and that was just kind of an interesting, like, new fun thing that I've never tried, so we decided to come out. I am so used to doing routes alone and doing things alone and I can use, like, my partner to, like, help me, like, figure out how I'm going to do something, but I've never had to, like, rely on her to, like, actually get up the wall. So that was definitely interesting. Now, if you want to participate in Valen Climbs Day, you do need to do so before Sunday, as that is the day that they'll be taking everything down. Reporting from the Rec Center, Michelle Kaufman, NewsLink, Indiana. The rock wall is located in the Rec Center, room 201. Amazon isn't feeling the love for New York. The retail giant has canceled plans to open HQ2 in New York. A spokeswoman said in a statement, after much thought and deliberation, we've decided not to move forward with our plans to build a headquarters for Amazon in Long Island City, Queens. Amazon noted in the statement that opposition from state and local politicians contributed to the decision. Protests broke out in the community after the HQ2 announcement where the plan was criticized for its potential impact on taxpayers and the neighborhood. Amazon said it will still be moving forward with Virginia and the opening of an Amazon hub in Nashville. They have no plans to reopen the search for HQ2. The David Alzey Museum of Art is preparing for the next event after today's Impressions of Love exhibit. News Inc. Indiana's Lily Cedardall went to the museum to talk to a docent about today's event and other events that they have planned. Music in the museum is a frequent event here at Ball State. The museum chooses showcases to celebrate and consider a special exhibition each semester and hopes to blend it to a selection of songs. To celebrate Ball State's centennial, the museum chose this semester's exhibition to be Impressions of Love, lining up conveniently with Valentine's Day. The museum's assistant director, Rachel Buckmaster, is excited to see what the spring semester exhibition is featuring. I thought it might be fun to have a couple give a performance, and uh, it turned out Valentine's Day was on the calendar and available, and it just worked out to be a romantic um, offering of love songs inspired um, by the collection. The performers at the Music in the Museum's events are put on by students and faculty in the School of Music at Ball State. The School of Music works carefully to select songs that reflect the spirit of each exhibition, as well as music that was listened to at the times the paintings were created at the turn of the 20th century. These are some of the many reasons Buckmaster enjoys sponsoring the Music in the Museum events. I enjoy these special events um, to see people interact with the artwork and the museum itself in a different way. Sometimes it's an unexpected experience. After the latest Music in the Museum, the David Alsey Museum of Art is hosting a series of meditations within the museum beginning tomorrow, February 15th at 3 p.m. From Muncie, this has been Lily Cedardall, NewsLink, Indiana. There are many events coming up for the David Alzey Museum. Times and dates for all events at the museum can be found on the Muncie calendar. All right, Liz, and it was definitely a warm one today. We're hoping that those warm temperatures are going to continue because we definitely loved it. Yeah, you know what? I think Cupid's going to start to get scared away with all these colder temperatures that we're starting to get overnight tonight. Right now, pretty quiet, but that's not going to be the case overnight. I'll detail it all out in my full weather. For those who serve today, and those who served before them. For those whose sacrifice will never end. The Gary Sinise Foundation shows its gratitude through entertainment, outreach, and life-changing support. 
We can never give enough, but we can always give a little more. Find out how you can donate at GarySiniseFoundation.org. Sometimes there is no do-over. Some things you can't rewind. That's when an extra safety step could mean the difference between a close call and a call to 911. Simple steps save lives. Learn more at poolsafely.gov. Emergency plan today. Of all the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. And welcome back to Newslink Indiana. Now we do want to take a moment and say happy Valentine's Day from us to you. And it was definitely a warmer one out there. The temperatures out there felt really nice. Mm -hmm. I would definitely enjoy being out and being able to just go around campus on my Valentine's Day and being able to go hang out with my friends actually outside this time. Yeah, I think it was a lovely day overall. Conditions overnight tonight, definitely not going to be as lovely as that we felt today. Right now on campus, we're looking at temperatures still feeling pretty cold. We're seeing temperatures right around 49 degrees, so you're still going to need the jacket if you're headed out. Winds overall are sitting at 15 miles per hour, making us feel like we're in the lower 40s right now over campus. As we start to push off into the later half of the night tonight, temperatures drop out into the mid 20s. We see a chance for rain start to come in. That's ahead of another cold front pu pushing through our area. Not only is that going to bring us some precipitation and some cold, cold temperatures, we're also looking at some pretty gusty winds overnight tonight. But here's the silver lining. Again, today we've seen beautiful conditions. Most of the state sitting nearly 20 degrees warmer than where we were yesterday. 90 degrees warmer here in Muncie, 17 in Indianapolis. Champaign only 9 degrees warmer, but still it was a major warm up. But that's not going to last for long because again, this cold front pushes through relatively fast in the overnight hours. All of this green outlining this cold front, that's going to push into our area come tomorrow morning. And then as that really starts to settle in in the afternoon, we're going to be seeing a nearly 20 degree drop in temperatures throughout the day tomorrow. Precision cast times this out. You see all of these cold temperatures that we're seeing mixed with all of the uh, moisture in the atmosphere. That's just a big recipe for some snowfall. That's what we're going to plan out for Sunday. Sunday at 5 a.m. That's when I think this is going to start to push in from the west part of the state. This comes into our area by 9, 10 a.m. That's when I think we'll see the first chances for some snowflakes to fall. Once we get into the afternoon hours, we'll see some widespread rain and snow. A big swath of moisture en envelops us all the way from Bloomington to Indianapolis and to Muncie. But this model is still pretty early out. We could be looking at conditions start to push more north. And if they do push more north, we're not looking at snow anymore. We're looking at more sleet and ice chances in the forecast. Luckily, though, I think this system will start to push out by late Sunday night and into Monday morning. And Monday will stay pretty dry. For the weekend, we're seeing temperatures in the 30s. Saturday, 31 degrees, mostly cloudy. As we get into Sunday, we're seeing temperatures near 35 degrees. But again, that precipitation comes into play. Even though we're seeing all of these winter-like effects, it doesn't feel like we're getting close to spring, but we're, hey, 34 days away. At least that's a silver lining to look forward to. Spring starts March 20th, but we aren't seeing any spring-like temperatures in the next seven days. The next seven days, we're staying pretty mild in temperatures. We really don't break the 30s anytime soon. Lows stick in the 20s. I've never seen a more average seven-day forecast than this one, and I know that's pretty weird to say. Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're looking at some more moisture coming into the picture. And I think Tuesday and Wednesday, we could be looking at another snow and rain mix. But yeah. yeah. 
And that forecast definitely isn't leaving me heartbroken. I love the fact that the temperatures <laughs> are definitely getting a little bit, you know, higher than what they have been because it's been cold the past several days, but today, not the case at all. Exactly. All right, Liz, thank you so much. <laughs> and Alicia, what do we have coming up in sports? Well, men's volleyball has some tough competition this weekend, and a baseball treasure has been found in Nevada. Isn't this perfect? It was my pleasure. May I? Adam, I can't thank you enough for saving me from that sweepstakes scam. I could have lost everything. It was a classic cat and mouse game. Remember, you never have to pay to play. You're my hero. Huh. After all these years. What's the matter, Adam? Cat got your tongue? Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. I'm Alicia Vinarcha with sports. Baseball season is right around the corner and the preseason rankings are out. Kent State is the favorite to win the MAC, receiving eight of the 10 first place votes. But Ball State wasn't far behind in the poll. The Cardinals are, are picked to fi finish second in the MAC, and according to BaseballAmerica.com, first in the MAC West. Baseball America also picked Ball State as the team to take down Kent State. Their potential to play spoiler for Stack Golden Flash's lineup is attributed to their stellar pitching rotation. They're led by sophomore John Baker, who America, Baseball America picked as their favorite for MAC pitcher of the year and as the top MLB draft prospect from the MAC. First pitch for the season is set for tomorrow night at 9 against Stanford as part of the Grand Canyon University Classic in Arizona. This weekend, the Ball State's gymnastics team will host their second meet of the year, but their uniforms will be a bit different. When the Cardinals host Northern Illinois, they will each sport lime green ribbons for the color of mental health awareness. This is done in partnership with the Mid-American Conference's initiative during Mental Health Awareness Week. On the floor, Ball State will look to build off their first meet where they edged all Western Michigan by less than a point. While the gymnastics team is playing host, the men's volleyball team is headed to the Windy City. The competition they face this weekend should be the toughest of the year as they take on two nationally ranked teams. The Cardinals' first challenge will be against number 10 Lewis University tomorrow evening at 8. It won't get easier for Ball State as they travel up the road to square off against number 7 Loyola Chicago Saturday. One California man got a deal of a lifetime after a stop in Nevada. A baseball card collector says he found a rare Babe Ruth baseball card in his sh shop in Sparks, Nevada last month. Dale Ball was visiting Nevada from Fresno, California, but he says he went into a small shop to sell a couple of Sacagawea coins. Ball said he couldn't believe the card was only $8, but the owner of the store thought it was a fake and sold it for two. Ball took it to get it authenticated. Turns out, the card is a 1921 Babe Ruth Stonewell E121 model. I didn't even know what to say. I had tears start running down my face, to tell you the truth. You can't even imagine the feeling. Ball says he's received and turned down three multi-million dollar offers to buy the card. 
Yeah, and I feel like if you're a baseball collector, a baseball card collector at least, that's something that's crazy yeah. to you because it's a multi-million dollar card. And yeah. you know, I know my sister, she heard about that story. She would be going crazy crazy because it's just a two dollar card and it should be it's worth millions yeah babe ruth one of the best of all time you can't mm -hmm. beat it mm -hmm. but truly it's priceless guys yeah, you can't it beat it all right alicia thank you so much yeah. hey so how about i take this one so they yeah, look yeah, good sorry. together a fan favorite collaboration is coming back the details coming up in trending plus we'll tell you why disney just can't let it go stay right there we'll be back right after this Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlow. Ooh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Trulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Problems. The ones nobody talks about at cocktail parties. We go looking for them. No matter the obstacles, no matter the odds, we surround a community's most critical problems and we fight. United Way fights for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in every community. Will you? It doesn't take a scientist to cure hunger or a fancy economist to create safe housing. It takes imagination, creativity, sweat equity. When I think of kids going to school hungry, hunger, homelessness, in this land of plenty, seriously? Come on, we could fix this. Help out or don't. The choice is yours. Here's your sandwich, miss. Oh, thank you. And your burger. Awesome, thank you. And your bowl of boiling water, sir. Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. Now it's time for the segment that we definitely love the most. It's time to take a look at what is trending. Joining us now is NewsLink Indiana's Isabel Kostoviak. What do you have for us? Hey guys, uh, so Cardi B is back from her two-day Instagram retirement Ooh. to announce a new song release. The Grammy-winning artist posted a teaser image regarding a new track coming out Friday with artist Bruno Mars. The two have collaborated before on a remix of Bruno Mars's Finesse, which appeared on his album 24K Magic. Now the two are prepared to take over the music world once more with a hashtag two Grammy winning artists. No other hints as to what the song may be have been released, but the track is set to drop at midnight tomorrow. Now it has been a chilly winter, but fall is about to get a little more frozen. Walt Disney Studio has released their first teaser trailer yesterday evening for Frozen 2. The movie franchise began in 2013 with the release of Frozen when Elsa froze over their country of Arendelle. Now Elsa, Anna, Kristoff, Olaf, and Sven are back together for more epic adventures. Indina Menzel and Kristen Bell will return as our favorite sisters, while Josh Gad is returning as our favorite snowman. The official release date of the movie is set for November 22, 2019. Yeah, and I'm definitely excited for uh, Frozen. I still haven't seen the first one, but the second one, is, am I crazy for that? Yes, the first one gave <laughs> so many great songs. Oh my gosh, I loved the first one. Yeah, and speaking I, of songs, I, I can't ahead. believe you haven't <laughs> seen it. Everyone's I still haven't seen, seen it. it. I still need to see it, but hopefully that second one, because I've heard that the first one is good, I'm hoping that that second one is definitely better than the first. Mm -hmm. And back to uh, Bruno Mars and Cardi B, you guys know me. You guys know that I love both of them. They're yes. both amazing. <laughs> yes, I love them too. Um, I'm excited to see what the song is. I'm intrigued to see like what type of music maybe they'll out but yeah it'll be very yeah. interesting hopefully it's good isabel thank you so much and just to make a frozen pun hopefully it's not too frozen out there <laughs> and uh maybe we'll be able to build a snowman no you know what we're gonna stay pretty mild <laughs> for the next couple of days pretty average for this time of year mostly looking in those mid to lower 30s hitting the upper 30s come next work week but 
really the days to note are just Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in terms of precipitation, but we're gonna start to stay pretty average for this time of year. All right, Liz, thank you so much. And that's all tonight for News Link Indiana. Be sure to join us again tomorrow for our midday show that's streaming live on the News Link Indiana Facebook page. And for news anytime, anywhere, go to BallStateDaily.com. Have a great night.